Every manufacturer has those great coasters that everyone loves. But what is a coaster except for the sum of a bunch of elements? Sometimes they thrill riders by tossing them out of their seat, or crushing them into it, whipping them around, leaving them upside down, or firing them out of a station in the blink of an eye. Today, I'm going down my list and picking out the best one. These are every manufacturer's best element. First, I want to thank Lou Coasters for this video idea. Also, I'm going to stick to my personal list. I just think you have to experience these elements to appreciate them, and I don't want to have to guess. So if you have any elements that differ from mine, let me know in the comments below. Let's start with aerodynamics, and as much as I love the grand finale on Magnum XL200, those triangle hills giving some of the best airtime ever, that's really the result of some questionable manual engineering. But in this case, it works to our advantage. Aero's best element is X2's first drop. This is really a masterpiece. Just the idea of dropping riders face down a 200 foot near vertical drop and then flipping them over on their back before they bottom out. It's one of those elements you can't prepare for. I've ridden X2 dozens of times and every time you crest that hill, you have to hold your breath for that insane first drop. B&M has coasters of all kinds. Some love Kumba's Hell Roll, some love Tatsu's Pretzel Loop, but no surprise, I'm an airtime guy. So which airtime moment is B&M's best? Those 5 second airtime hills on Mako and Candemonium are awesome. Fury 325's first drop is amazing, but it's a much shorter coaster that makes my list. Raging Bull and that 208 foot first drop. You have to ride this in the back row, not second to back, very back, and you pick up some speed off the pre-lift, and by the time it's your turn to barrel down that first drop, it doesn't get any better when it comes to B&M. It's an ejector moment that lasts a long time. You're out of your seat until you hit the bottom. Custom Coasters International, or CCI, is a wooden coaster manufacturer, and when it comes to woodies, it's hard to make elements stand out. Cyclops at Mount Olympus has one of those moments. It comes midway through the ride. You dive down off the cliff, and in the back, you get some mad ejector. But it's another mid-course drop that makes this list, that being on Ghost Rider. The key here is no mid-course brake run. That was even removed when GCI retracted it in 2015, and now it's back. If that's off, you get thrown out of your seat in the back row, and that kicks off an epic, out-of-control second half. Chance Rides doesn't have a lot of coasters to choose from, and for me, it's easy. Lightning Run is her best coaster. It's the little steel coaster that acts like an RMC, and after a compact layout full of airtime, it ends with a sharp run of airtime hills. If you're not staple by this point, you're gonna love that ending. It's simple, but it gives the people what they want. Crazy ejector before you hit the final brakes. The Din Corporation is another wooden coaster company, and in this case, none of their elements really stand out. I'd say their best element is the first airtime hill on Thunder Run, this also being a Kentucky Kingdom, but I want to give Charles Din a little more credit. The beast at Kings Island was his project when he worked there, and that helix finale is off the wall. This was even crazier at night, that gradual drop off the second lift diving right into it, and when you can't see anything, it feels like you never stop dropping. I don't normally love helices, but this one is something else. ENF Mylar mostly makes coasters for small kids, but once in a while, you will see a supersized Mylar. Their best is Prairie Screamer at Prairie Playland. I just got back on that for the first time in a year and a half and it really blew me away. This has some janky airtime and I loved it, but I can't think of any one hill that stands out. So let's go with that 80 foot first drop. That is a long way down when you're riding those skinny rails, and in the back you get a nice pop of airtime. This is truly a hidden gem in North Texas. Great Coasters International, or GCI, also makes wooden coasters, and I had a hard time with this one. I love a lot of GCIs, but finding one great element was not easy. When I rode Mystic Timbers this year, riding in the back row, I really enjoyed the whip you got over that first drop. It's not super elite, or one of my favorite first drops, but it does stand out as one specific moment I really enjoyed, so let's go with that. It's got a lot of force, both lateral and negative. Gerslauer makes a lot of compact punchy coasters, using angles to their advantage, and Shellraiser's 121 and a half degree drop does not make my list. Not even that great rolling launch, although that was close. Monster is my favorite Gerslauer, and that's full of great elements, but not the best. I'm going all the way to Norway, back when I went to Tusenfrid and rode Storm the Dragon Legend, the inverted multi-pass launch coaster. This has one of the coolest elements on any coaster, this inverted airtime hill. You don't see gray ejector when you're hanging under the track, but Gerslauer got the job done, and I applaud them for it. Giovanola has three coasters, and I've ridden two of them. Goliath and Titan are not my favorite rides, and I'm not a big fan of bone-crushing helices. If I was, Titan's first helix would win. But after all, I'm an airtime guy, and I have gotten some very good airtime on Goliath's one airtime hill. This doesn't always happen. It seems like, over the past few years, it's kinda weak. 
But when I was younger, I used to love getting that sustained floater. I don't know if the ride changed or I changed, but it doesn't hit the same. Still, I got good memories on that hill. The Gravity Group also makes wooden coasters, but they do a better job putting in standout elements. Hades 360 has that drop out the station, the massive tunnel under the parking lot, that corkscrew, but none of that is good enough for this list. Sorry mind blower, I love that roll, but you don't get it either. The Voyage has a triple down that goes underground, that's not it either. I'm going to Bay Beach and Zippin' Pippin', and the most shocking element of my coaster life, the Ejector Death Hill. This mild-mannered Midwestern Woody doesn't seem to have an edge. It gives you nice floater going out, but when you come back, it has that one messed up demonic hill, and it really puts your PTC ratcheting lap bar to the test. You have to ride it to believe it. I haven't ridden too many Hopkins, and they're not loaded with great elements by any means. I'm going with Texas Tornado at Wonderland, and I'm choosing that final loop. I had two jacked up loops to choose from, but the last one is so ridiculous, I'm picking that one. Even though it looks like that, it rides pretty smooth. So, good job Hopkins. You scared everyone, but you didn't hurt them. Intamin is one of the world's top manufacturers, and you have Accelerator's Amazing Launch, Velocicoaster's Mosasaurus Roll, I-305 Switchbacks, but this one is easy for me. It's the first two Camelbacks of El Toro. I would also throw in the first drop. That's one of my all-time favorites, but the last time I was there, the Camelbacks were noticeably better. The train flies over these so fast, it's just pure sustained power that you don't find anywhere else. Even RMC can't match the quantity and quality of airtime on those Camelbacks. And before you ask, yes, these are a lot better than the Rolling Thunder Hill, at least in my opinion. Jinma is a Chinese coaster company and I have never ridden one of their projects, but I'm just going to assume the broken rail is their best element. It's a fun gimmick and it'll probably freak me out the first time, and honestly every time. Mock Rides has some elite coasters, and a lot of them I haven't even ridden yet. But when you think about the non-inverting loop on DC Rivals Hypercoaster, or the Top Hat Camelback combo on Helix, those are absolutely insane. But I don't have to go to Australia or Sweden to find the best mock element. That's the first drop on Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. You can take this in different directions in different rows. For some, you're diving forward. For some, you're falling backward. But in that back car, you go down sideways and you get ripped over the edge. It's almost a must ride in the back car just for that one element alone. Just like X2's first drop, you can't ever get used to that drop. Just hold your breath and take it. Maurer makes a lot of spinning coasters and wild mouse coasters, but they have that masterpiece at Universal Studios Florida, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, one of the most polarizing coasters ever built. I had a magical ride in the back row in 2021, and even though it was an elite ride of sharp negatives and gray out positives, that non-inverting loop was by far the best element. In the back row, I left my seat in the way up, and I didn't land back into it until we bottomed out. That was one insane mix of laterals and airtime. Morgan is known for their hypers, but their best work is their conversion of the Arrow Steel Vantom, turning that into Vantom's Revenge. A lot of that layout belongs to Arrow, including the first drop. Also, that wild 228 foot drop into that ravine. But their best element is actually one of their own, part of that great airtime finale. As you pass the station, you dive down and it's an absolute pure ejector moment. You launch into your tiny lap bar, and it really sets a tone for the airtime on the rest of the ride. PAX is a Russian manufacturer, and I've never ridden one of their coasters. But based on what I've seen, it's either this first airtime hill on Wild Train at Fantasiana, or this crazy scorpion tail at Cobra at Connyland. Either way, you can't go wrong. Pinfari mostly makes fair rides. Those portable coasters that can't be packed up and show up at a new park the next day, so their elements aren't really that great. The one I'm choosing is the first drop on Wonderland's mousetrap. That's right, Wonderland, this little carnival park in Amarillo, Texas. That gets two entries on this list. This Cyclone model has three car trains, so when you ride in the back, you get some great whip over the first drop, and I'm calling that the best of Pinfari. Premier Rides is known for their launch coasters, but none of their launches really stand out. I love the high five on West Coast Racers. That's an intense pop of lateral ejector. I love the hang time on Full Throttle's loop. I used to love the zero G roll on Kittywood Skyrocket, but my ride in 2024 was not good. I did not feel any of that great airtime, so I'm booting it out of this list. I'm choosing the vertical twisted drop on their Skyrocket 2 models. This is especially good on the SeaWorld versions, the ones with three cars instead of two. Even though those do have the comfort collars, it's worth having that extra car because of that whip. You get ripped over the edge, thrown out of your seat, twisting around 180 degrees. It gets you every time. Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters, or PTC, made wooden coasters going back to the early 20th century, and they stopped after 1976. They don't really have crazy elements, but one stands out for me. That finale on their best coaster, Phoenix. No matter where you're sitting, front or back, you will get tossed into your buzz bar in every one of those hills, one after another, and it's a perfect way to end an airtime-filled ride. Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, has no shortage of options. 
Just a few that stand out. The top gun stall on Twisted Colossus. The barrel roll down drop on Iron Gwazi. The big outer bank on Steel Vengeance. That used to be my favorite element of all time, but after riding Air Force One 17 times last summer, I think it's double up beats it. Coming off that amazing outer bank hill, this tosses you out of your seat on the first up. Then you get some insane sustained ejector over that second up. And for good measure, you dive down to a zero G roll. There's no wonder, this is my number three coaster. It's an all-star team of RMC elements, but that double up is a star of the ride. The Roller Coaster Corporation of America, or RCCA, is quite infamous. They've made some bad rides, and the one I rode was Son of Beast. This was not a good ride by any means, but credit where credit is due. Son of Beast had a very intense vertical loop. It wasn't just a novelty, that loop packed in the positive Gs. It's a shame in 2007 they removed the one really good part of the ride, operating three more seasons like that. SNS has one of the most diverse coaster catalogs ever, and if you've been to Fuji Cube Highland, you might say it's Dodadampa's insane launch, or that 249 foot drop on Aja Nika, pretty much the same as X2, just taller. I should find out about that next year, but for now I'm gonna stick to what I know, and that's Max Force's launch. I liked it the first time around in 2021, but my rides in 2023 were even better. I also got a front row ride, and that took the experience to a new level. 0 to 78 in 1.8 seconds. Your stomach is gone. You can't prepare for a launch that powerful. SBF Visa makes a lot of small rides, but this one is easy. Teeny weeny at Tucson Frit. Just the whole ride. All 85.3 feet of track is the best element. However, I was today years old when I found out this was taken out after last season. I really had no idea. What a shame. Schwarzkopf has a lot of old coasters still going strong. Some portable models, some permanent ones. And even though these are all quality rides, they don't have that one great standout element. My favorite is the first airtime drop on Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas. After crushing you into your seat with back-to-back -back loops, this rises up, turns around, and then chucks you out of your seat, right into your small painful lap bar. But that's fine. Take your pain with a sight of airtime. It's a weird airtime moment, but it's got some power. Skyline doesn't have a great catalog. At this point, I don't know if they have anything active in it, but I did get to ride some of their defunct coasters, and the best element was the hang time on Title Twister. SeaWorld San Diego only had this coaster for four years. I got to ride it on its opening year, and even though its airtime hill wasn't much, that inline twist gave some good hang time, so that wins by default. Togo is a Japanese manufacturer, and their American catalog is kinda weak. Fujiyama looks great. Those Ultra Twisters look like they have great forces, but I haven't gotten to ride any of those coasters yet. I'm sticking with the only American Togo still standing, Big Apple Coaster. The best element is by far the dive loop. It's the signature element, the train turning over, leaving you upside down, and eventually hitting the loop. It's quirky, it's forceful, and dare I say, it's actually a good element on a ride that doesn't really have any. Vacoma is working wonders around the world, and their modern day creations are slowly sneaking into the USA. For me, it comes down to two elements. I love the vertical loop on their Flying Dutchman coasters. You take those backwards while laying on your back. That's just so cool, but I actually like one other element better. That launch on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Epcot's one and only coaster is a great one, and you kick off your mile plus spinning ride with a launch. You do this backwards and that adds to it. Plus, you're in that electric tunnel, and you launch into the show building. It combines good force with good visuals. Vegan makes alpine coasters, and even though some of these are better than others, it's hard to pinpoint a good element. I'm going with the finale on Mountain Coaster at Utah's Park City Mountain Resort. You have this long straightaway over this bridge, and then a run of the most random little bumps coming back to the station. It's not necessarily good, but it stands out as something different. These rides are all pretty much twists and turns down a mountain. Zamperla has Top Thrill 2, and obviously I haven't ridden that yet. I plan on it this summer, but scrap those plans for obvious reasons. That back spike looks awesome, but personally, I have to go with something less cool, albeit very punchy. Motor Coasters Launch this motorbike coaster at Six Flags Darien Lake isn't very fast, just 37 miles an hour in 2 seconds. But the way it launches and winds up to its 43 foot peak, that packs a huge punch, and dare I say, is quite intense. I have only ridden this in the front row, so I don't know how it is in the back, but in the front, you feel those g-forces. Last one, Zier is an easy one for me. Sure, Verbolton's drop track is awesome, but they built one of the coolest elements I've ever ridden, Wicked's Vertical Launch. This is a rolling launch, and you feel the first kick before you go up the 110 foot top hat. And once you're vertical, you feel the second kick, and that one is awesome. Definitely unlike anything else I've ever experienced on a coaster. We need more vertical launches out there. I shouldn't have to go out to the middle of nowhere Utah to get one. So there you go, every manufacturer's best element. At least, based on what I've experienced for my 677 credits. Let me know what you think, where do you agree or disagree, and what you would have changed around. 
If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. I have a playlist with other manufacturer videos. Also, check out my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.